hello, 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 hello again. Today is Monday and it is April the 25th, 2016. This is episode 10 of Wide Open Talk Show. My name is Donovan and of course I have with me Sam. How's your weekend, man? It was good. Spent some time with friends. Might still be recovering a bit from it, but still, <laughs> otherwise I'm doing well. <laughs> oh, yeah, that when, that made me think because whenever you said recovering, and I know your recovery is is different, but uh, I was listening to the latest episode of uh, Justin's Politics, 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 mm. and he made a comment about how uh, something about he had just stayed in his cocoon because he'd gone out drinking the night before, and <laughs> you know he realized that he could he could still drink like he was twenty one. But the day after, the recovery wasn't quite as quick as <laughs> when he was 21. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so what'd you do this weekend? Oh, uh, just went to a friend's birthday party. And because it was that friend's birthday, they leveraged that to make me stay up later than I normally do. So now I'm. <laughs> mm. I, I got home at like two o'clock in the morning the next day. So <laughs> that's very out of character for you. It is. Yeah, I, I I don't think I'm going to be making that mistake ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw you mention that on Snapchat, and I was like, wow. <laughs> he, he must have been like a zombie. <laughs> That's about the most accurate way to describe it, yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Okay, well, this is Wide Open Talk Show, and it is a call-in show. And that number is 229-518-3525, 229-518-3525. Call us and uh, weigh in on any of the stories that we're going to be covering in this episode. Or, if, you know, if you want to bring in anything that we covered last week and talk about that, that that'd be great too. Uh, one announcement that we would like to make is originally the idea for this show was to be a Monday through Thursday show. But we've changed it where it's going, instead of four times a week, it's going to be two times a week. So we're going, the plan now is to do it Monday and Wednesday for the foreseeable future at 2 p.m. And then, of course, if, you know, Sam's job situation changes, then we may have to adjust the timing. And uh, and, and that's like, I potentially may not be able to do it this Wednesday at 2, mm -hmm. which... Um, it just depends if some product comes in, then I got a job I need to do. Otherwise, I'll do it Thursday, and I should be fine Wednesday. But you know, we, you know, I guess we we still could could do it around six o'clock if we needed to Wednesday mm -hmm. afternoon. We'll just have to play that by ear. Yep. Yeah. You know, or as they say, you know, the const the constipated mathematician. You know how he worked it out with a pencil. Anyway, <laughs> <sighs> that was terrible. That was uh -huh. just absolutely terrible. <laughs> That was about that. That was almost well. Actually, I think that one was actually worse than your dad joke about boiling the hell out of water to make it holy. So, <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, I'm having to act like a octopus again. All right, mm -hmm. so this is kind of a throwback to a story that we covered last week about Utah, and uh, apparently, pornography is creating a public health crisis. So uh, an additional story, this one is over at rightwingwatch.org, and um, this one is talking about the uh, Family Research Council's Washington uh, Watch program. One of the sponsors appeared on the program to defend the measure, which the governor signed last Tuesday, and this person alleged that the availability of pornography is violating his First Amendment right to not view it. Think about that. So, okay. State Senator Todd uh, Weiler, I guess, W E I L E R, who's a Republican, has also urged libraries and McDonald's to uh, block pornography websites on their Wi Fi. He's claiming that he has heard, now get this, anecdotal, anecdotally, there's no evidence. This is just anecdotally that children could go to McDonald's and view pornographic websites. Quote, I said to McDonald's, you're a family restaurant and you market to children. Why would you want to be a purveyor of pornography? I don't know if that's exactly how he said it, but... Right. 
That's that's usually how I imagine these holier than thou people uh, actually making their statements. <laughs> so, yeah, you imagine them doing a bit of oratory while they're at it. Go aha at the end of it. While yeah, at it. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you just got your ten dollar word oratory. <laughs> that's Use right. That one in a sentence next time, and that's all you're gonna get. <laughs> uh so. He goes on to say, you know, the librarians will put their hands over their hearts and talk about the First Amendment, and yet, if these libraries and these McDonald's were giving cigarettes to our children, we'd all be up in arms. We'd be picketing them. Somehow it's okay if they deliver pornography to, to, uh, to our children. Now, here's something, I... <laughs> here's something that we need to get clear. Libraries have firewalls and web filters. Yeah. They have to have. They are state agencies. Yeah. Um, or at least local government. But they, <laughs> they, look, if you want to go to a library and sit down at a computer and you type in Pussycat Dolls, which is a legitimate name of a band, guess what I'm about 90% sure is going to happen? You're going to get blocked. Yeah. Simply because of that one word in their name. I mean, heck, I told you about yesterday or last week where I was trying to show someone a Tumblr post at the library and it came back saying, no, this website's pornographic. Right. Like, okay. Right. <laughs> so that, that's my point. Uh, this guy has no idea. He does not understand how any of this works. Um, I cannot say with any certainty that McDonald's actually does any type of web filtering, but... I would imagine that they do simply because they are a business. They are providing a service freely like Wi-Fi. But unfortunately, because they are providing it, this is not the same scenario where, oh, well, you can't go after, you can't go after an ISP because of child pornography or pornography or anything like that. I mean, it's been proven time and time again in all of the court cases that the ISPs cannot be the police when it mm. comes. They can't police this stuff. It's just you're going down the wrong rabbit hole when you think that that's going to work. Yeah. Well, at the same time, McDonald's itself can't necessarily do that. But if they want to protect themselves from any future liability and say, we had a scenario where one of our clients has free Wi-Fi uh, for their customers and we went in and actually route them through a proxy where we filter for uh, pornographic terms and things like that. And the reason why we did that, our customer didn't even think about it, but the reason why we did it, I said, well, stop and think about it. All right, you got this waiting room, and you got these people, they're on their smartphones, some of them are on their tablets, some of them are on laptops, and you got kids running around. All right, who's to say that you're not going to have some jerk sit there and decide, <laughs> you know what? This is probably a good place for me to get get uh, get my jollies for a little bit, and so he goes and decides to go to like Pornhub or YouPorn or RedTube or any of these others, and then children see it. Said, "You want to get your ass in a sling?" <laughs> yeah. So that's the reason why we did it. So I have to think that McDonald's would actually be filtering this stuff because even this guy, this Todd Weiler, this state senator of Utah is saying anecdotally he's yeah. heard. <laughs> he does not have any firsthand knowledge whatsoever. Mm -hmm. and, and then he goes on to say, quote, that's what I think is often lost in the First Amendment discussion because someone may have the First Amendment right, according to the U.S. Supreme Court, to view pornography, but what about my First Amendment right to not view it? Okay. Apparently, it doesn't take a very high IQ to be a state senator. <laughs> because this you just now discovered this. Well, you know, I, I had hope upon hope that I was wrong, but this guy right here just pretty much proved it. Hmm. Oh, you know, <laughs> you don't have a First Amendment right to not view something. You have the right to just not watch it. You know what right. I'm saying? I mean. I have the First Amendment right to consume whatever content that I want to legally. Mm. Now, granted, if I'm sitting in a public venue 
and there are children around, then I can actually get arrested because I'm contributing to the delinquency or I'm endangering children. Mm. That's completely different. That has nothing to do with First Amendment. So this guy's completely off his rocker going down this whole train of thought about First, you got the First Amendment right to to uh, to watch it, and I've got the First Amendment right to not view it. Well, okay, don't effing view it. That solves the problem <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. And of course, he goes on to hail British Prime Minister David Cameron for his government-led push to block pornographic websites in the UK. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, the way I remember they have to do that, and I could be wrong, is you're immediately blocked and you actually have to request to be unblocked. Yeah. That's, as far as I know, that's how it works. Um, you have to call up your <laughs> company and say, hey, yes, I'd like the pornography, please. Who's going to do that? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Who, who wants to go through that awkward conversation of going, I'd like the porn, please. Oh, so that's what you do in your free time. <laughs> I wonder, do you actually have to call, or maybe you can like log into your account with your ISP, and it's a check mo- box that says, you know, do not filter pornographic websites. That would make it a lot less awkward. <laughs> yeah, and I would hope that's the way they do it. There's no guarantee that that's the way they do it, but I would hope that's the way they do it. Otherwise, they're having fascinating conversations at the ISP office. Do you want to know who got on the porn <laughs> list today? Him? But he's a high-ranking government official. I know, right? (laughs) Look, I hate to admit this, but I will. But having run a a cable broadband company and having adult pay-per-views and having to review the adult pay-per-view purchases, (laughs) yeah, yeah, they is some freaks up in this town. (laughs) Uh. Not naming no names. <laughs> Vice Mayor. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting my butt in a sling. No, I, I, I do yeah. not know that. But uh, you just went for the funny stereotype and then cut it off. Right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm not making any accusations, City Manager. But um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Let's move on to Facebook. Well, <laughs> Facebook Messenger, actually. This is actually kind of cool, I guess. It Um, is. It now lets you make group calls with up to 50 people, just not video, so it's going to be audio. That's a hell of a conference bridge. That is is still good. I've got small groups of people that I'm in groups with right now, like my – it's just little groups that we organize stuff. I've got one for the D&D thing at the library. All of us are in there in case they need to shoot us all an announcement, Mm -hmm. and – We've got one for our monthly D&D. That way all of us can talk it out in one thread without having to go, well, he said, he said. No, we're all talking in the same thread. Um, it'd be interesting if you could take those things and be like, G- guys, I need to ask you something real quick. Everyone in a proper place? Okay, press the button. And okay, now we're all on audio, right? It'd be nice. Yeah, it would. Now, this article was uh, is on The Verge, originally published on Tuesday. Not Tuesday. Was it Tuesday? It was April 20th, whatever that was. Let's see. I'm not doing the math. Um, it was a Wednesday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now you know what my IQ is. Um, <laughs> anyway, so they announced the group calling feature for the Messenger app, which, you know, sometime in the last couple of years, they actually separated out the the Facebook app and the Messenger app into two different apps. It used to be together. Mm. Um, and, and I think that was probably a, a good choice because there's – Ironically enough, there's a lot of people that uses Facebook Messenger to to actually send text messages back and forth. And I don't mean like SMS, because as far as I know, unless I'm wrong on this, it won't do SMS. But yeah, it's data. You don't need it as long as you got a data connection. And you know, and and, and for someone with a smartphone, you're pretty much always going to have a data connection. You would think. Mm-hmm. So anyway. Um, they said this fe- this feature should actually be out now because then it was going to be rolled out over the next 24 hours. And I do recall on my my uh, Android phone that I did have a Messenger update. Uh, so I can only presume that that was part of it. So what it'll do is it'll show up as a phone icon in group chats. 
So once there, you can add new participants to the call. And of course, they want to be perfectly clear. It's not video chatting. Right. And it still restricts video chatting to the one-on-one conversations. Could you imagine 50 <laughs> video? No. <laughs> Just no. Not happening. And that's the day your bandwidth went boom. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I've got 10 gigs of data. What happened to it? Yesterday was the billing cut off. I, I, re- I reset today. <laughs> Yep, and you use 12 of the 10. And, you you know, don't be talking to all your friends on video. (laughs) Interesting little nugget. Messenger has over 900 million monthly active users. Mm. They're saying that it's becoming one of Facebook's most successful products ever. Wow. I, I use it from time to time. Mm. I've I've never actually used it to uh, make a you know a, a, a Facebook Messenger to Messenger phone call, if you will. Yeah. Um, but I would be interested to to try it out as far as this group audio is concerned, just to see the quality of it. Mm. Um, they go on to say that Messenger is uh, even more powerful now with group calling but it still can't compete with Google Hangouts or Skype for video calls, which, okay, I give you that. Yeah. But they're thinking that it's only a matter of time before they actually actually add it. So there's that. Go out there and call up 50 of your best buds and get in a conference call. Well, there is a lot of this conference calling happening now. Like Skype just recently even upgraded its mobile version to where you can do... I think at least 10 people mm-hmm. in a group mobile call. So, yeah, it's it's starting to be something that they're realizing this isn't just enterprise. We've got a lot of people wanting to do this, so let's do it. Yeah, I think they had to because they've, they've got other competitors that <clears throat> already do it. Um, I know whenever it was back before they actually made it freely available – um, because used to to do group video with Skype, you actually had to have a, a monthly subscription. Well, then you had other competitors like Uvu, and there's several of them out there that immediately came swinging out of the gate with like allowing eight to twelve video uh, calls at the same time. And you know, you got to question the quality and all of that. And like I said, I've insta- I installed Uvu a week or so ago and then immediately uninstalled it hmm. because it wouldn't let me tailor. It, it was only going to give me like a 320 by whatever, 320 by 240, I think, video size, which that's ridiculous. I mean, you know, in this modern age, 720 and 1080p, come on. So, um, you know, they really didn't have a choice. And, hmm. and I'm glad they, they did it. And as much as I hate Skype for some of its crap that it does, yeah. it's there's nothing out there right now that seems to be... I don't like Google Hangouts. Mm. I do not like the quality of Google Hangouts. I think I think the quality of Skype is actually better. Yeah. So... Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm not even going to dwell too much on this, this whole... Kurt Schilling thing, mm-hmm. simply because the only interest I had in Kurt Schilling was the fact that he used to uh, he used to run a video game company. Oh, it was the same one. In the back of my mind, I was sitting there thinking, "Is it the same yeah. guy that screwed up the video game?" Co- it is. Okay. Yep, it's the same one. And in so this, he's in trouble again. He's That's... in trouble again. Yeah, he, he was an analyst for ESPN. And he made an anti-transgender post, and ESPN said, yep, you're out of here. So, um, let's see. I think this was on their Facebook page. They said, ESPN is an inclusive company. Kurt Schilling has been advised that his conduct was unacceptable, and his employment with ESPN has been terminated. Hmm. Now, he further wrote on a blog post about the incident, quote, This latest brouhaha is beyond hilarious. I didn't post that ugly-looking picture. I made a comment about the basic functionality of men's and women's restrooms, period. I'm not even going to bother and go in and try to find what it was that he posted. Mm. Because, I mean, 
I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm to the point. I'm sick of this whole thing. <laughs> I mean, we don't have it in the show notes, but you know, Target came out last week and said, "Okay, well, we're just gonna open up the bathrooms to anybody." You know, if if you got male genitalia and you feel like going to the women's bathroom, then go to the women's bathroom. If you're a if you're a woman with the proper you know plumbing and you want to go to the men's bathroom, go to the men's bathroom. Is is essentially what they said. And the last thing I, I saw, there's a four hundred and fifty thousand uh, signed petition to boycott Target. Hmm. So well, we we talked about this a lot last week, right? The whole yeah. There's just there's too many angles to this thing. It's not it's not as easy as some other situations of this stature have been in the past, right? So is there's there's a whole lot of pluses there's a whole lot of negatives there's there's just no way to win no matter what side of this you happen to be on i don't see a winning scenario for anyone in this argument yeah my knee jerk reaction and i and i hate to admit this because i'm i'm you know at the older that i've gotten i've been trying to look at the world in in a different angle different light whatever you want to call it mm. and the old me would immediately go, well, if you got a twigs and berry, you go over to the one for men. If you don't, you go over to the one for women. There is no discussion. However, if you, you open your mind now, I guess, and you try to look beyond the actual physical sexual aspects of it, or, or not sexual, but the, the gender aspects of it, mm. and you look at it from the point of view of how people identify. And there's no denying that there is a shift. There is a paradigm shift, especially when you look at millennials and you look mm. up at, and you look at IGNs because the IGNs are the ones that's come, that are coming up after the millennials. They are typically pansexual. They have a tendency not to identify with either side. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in a situation like that? Do you strictly, Behold to okay, this is what your anatomy dictates. Dick dictates. <laughs> Whoopsies. Whoopsies. <laughs> anyway, or do you go by how you feel that day? I mean, you're right. I, it, this is not something that is going to be uh, rectified and and a, a solid solution found anytime soon. I mean. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we talked about it last week, and my thought was, well, just gender-neutral bathrooms for everybody. Just take out the stalls. And I actually talked with my family about that. And Tyler's like, well, I like the urinals. They, they use less water and all of that. And I said, okay, well, I'll meet you halfway. We have one bathroom, one huge effing bathroom. When you first walk in, you, uh, when you first walk in, you've got nothing but a row of stalls. And then when you get to the back, you actually have the urinals. That way, you know, the women, when they walk in, don't have to run the risk of seeing something that they might not want to see. And of course, that he pointed sense. out that those things have blinders and all this. And I said, well, not all of them. He said, well, every one I've been in, I said, mm -hmm. yeah, you got a point. I mean, the ones that we've been in around about in town, what have you do. But mm -hmm. anyway. That's that. Just good old Kurt Schilling's in, in a mess again, so. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, All right. So what do you think about Harriet Tubman being put on the uh, the face of the $20 bill? She's going to replace Andrew Jackson. I'm, I'm honestly fine with this. It's I just, Sometimes people will present something to me and go, isn't this controversial? And it's like, we're... We're changing money. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a, is, is a twenty dollar bill still going to function as a twenty dollar bill? It is. Okay. Good. Fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, it. The there is a, there is a side of me which squints a bit and goes. So they're doing this now, when most people use a card instead of having paper money in their wallet. So that's when they decide to do this, you know. But that's just that. That's just me having this little. I, I try to draw connections to things sometimes, and sometimes I'm flat wrong, but it, it does hit me that they picked an interesting time 
in money in general to make this change instead of earlier, I suppose. It's the best way to put it. Yeah. I mean, you actually hit on an angle I hadn't thought about. I mean, cash is not used as widely as it once was. Everything is plastic, pretty much. I mean, mm-hmm. I very rarely have any cash on me. And uh, it, it's, and when I do, I have a tendency to keep it on me for a while. I don't know why. But mm-hmm. I, I typically pay for everything with a, a debit or a credit card. Yeah. The way I look at this, though, I kind of I kind of look at it the way we've had this this big blow up over the Confederate flag. Mm. In my view of that, you've you've got the side of the camp that's like you're you're taking away my you're taking away the symbols of the South. Whenever you, you, we're we're talking about we're going to remove the Confederate flag from government buildings and and other places. And they're like, well, you know, you're just kowtowing to whichever other party or division or group of people or whatever. You know, this is part of our history and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, but look at it like this. It's a part of history that we need to be aware of, but Uh it's definitely not a part of history that we need to celebrate and be constantly reminded every single day if you happen to go by any government buildings well, there's the United States flag, or there's the state flag, and there's a Confederate flag, or or whatever. I mean, mm. does it belong in a, a museum so that we don't lose that history? Yes, that's exactly, to me, anything dealing with the Civil War, and of course, you know, the, the anything with race relations, um, women's right to vote, civil rights, all of this stuff, I think they're, they should be in a museum so that our children and our children's children can continue to learn about where their country came from. You know, how did this country start? What's the crap that we went through? What are the missteps that we made? You know, we, we made a lot of missteps. We didn't treat a certain section of the population the way they uh, deserve to be treated. So I have no problem with taking off the picture of Andrew Jackson, who is widely known to have, A, owned slaves, and was not a friend to the Native Americans. Matter of fact, Mm. he was responsible for a multitude of them dying. Yeah. (laughs) So it's kind of like it's the right thing to do. You know, a $20 bill is probably one of the most common bills in circulation. I don't know the statistics. I'm just guessing. Maybe it maybe it's a, a, a toss up between the ten and the twenty. Yeah, but most, I mean, most of the time when you get money out of an ATM, it's a bunch of twenties. Yeah, right. Yeah. So so we've adorned that particular bill, which is we're going to just go ahead and presume is the predominant bill in use in circulation. Yes, he was a president. But if he were alive today and had done those things that he had done then, <laughs> he wouldn't be on the $20 bill. He'd be in prison. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so putting someone like Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill to me is like an olive branch saying, look, we recognize that the, the foundation and the roots of our country was made in blood and sacrifice of people that really didn't have a choice in the matter. Mm. And, you know, now we're going to, we're going to highlight that and we're going to celebrate these people that did what they thought was the right thing to do to fight back at that time. And so I'm okay with it. I, mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with it at all. Plus it points out two different movements in our history. Um, it points out both the... It, both movements were pretty much di- the same type of movement, just different angles. So we've got a racial movement with slave owning and stuff like that. But we've also got the women's right to vote movement, which mm-hmm. I think is one of the main things that this is being placed on because she was part of both movements, huge parts of both of those movements. Mm-hmm. So she really is a historical figure that would make sense to put 
on a bill of a country that constantly, whether we actually practice it or not, um, talk about freedom and all this stuff. You know, it's, it would make sense that 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 fits the theme, so to speak. Yeah. There's no better way to put that. I tried. I, I get <laughs> oh, uh, some information from the producer. He apparently did some digging. The $1 bill is the most common, followed by the $100 bill and then the 20 Mm. I don't know about you, Sam, but I don't carry around a lot of hundred dollar bills. <laughs> nah, not really. Nah, no, not, not not even mainly at conventions. I try to break those suckers immediately because <laughs> that's the annoying bit. If you go to a certain level of money, my bank's ATM decides mm, I'm not giving you twenties anymore. I'm just going to give you. Oh, you want a hundred? I'll give you two fifties. How about that? It's like, no, I didn't want two fifties. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to bust these things somewhere. And some poor vendor on this floor, I'm gonna have to sit here and go, now which one of you am I going to inconvenience the least by handing you this huge bill? Mm -hmm. It's it's just ugh. I mean, whenever you're just doing it for standard carrying around, yeah. But when you're going to a convention, which is usually when I carry that amount of money on me, then it just goes. Oh, God, now I'm going to have to deal with this awkward situation because I've been <laughs> I've been a vendor. Me, me and my magic mentor sell stuff at the magic convention that I go to, so I know how this works. That dude that comes up and hands you a 50, that's inconvenient, okay? <laughs> Just going to put it out there. So it's I try not to put that on anyone else, but my bank isn't going to let me not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my wife tells me about the, the number of times that they will have just opened. I think they open at 9 o'clock, and someone will come in and buy maybe $10, $15 worth of stuff and hand 100 to be broken. Uh-huh. And you know, most places, I know whenever I worked at uh, the Radio Shack dealer in, um, in Fitzgerald back in the 90s, I mean, we started out with $100 in the teal. Mm-hmm. So if you came in and bought a $5 item, I had to give you $95 back. I was broke. Mm. Not happening. Sorry. <laughs> you want to buy something else? Get mm -hmm. it on up, maybe. But uh, there's also going to be some changes to the $5 bill. It's going to depict famous events from the Lincoln Memorial, such as the historic moment when First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt invited Marion Anderson to sing on the monument steps because the concert halls in Washington, D.C. were segregated. Oh, nice. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech delivered from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial will also be depicted, and these bills will be unveiled in 2020, which is the 100th anniversary of women's right to vote. Oh. Yeah. So are we going to have $5 bills with different variations on the back of them then? That, I think that's right. Oh, interesting. Uh, they they normally try to avoid stuff like that unless it's like one-off collector's things, right? But yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, based on what, what this says, it, it says, so you're going to have that and Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech on there. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. Well, good on them. Hmm. Okay, uh, last week we talked about that theater. What was the name of that theater? Brew. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Brewies. Brewies, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah it, was, it was a word that doesn't exist. That's why Right, right. <laughs> so we talked about that, and essentially it's a movie theater where you get to drink alcohol while you watch movies. Mm -hmm. But because of some weird legal crap uh if if the movie happens to have any nudity in it um and i guess by by the same token is rated r then you're they're violating the law if they allow alcohol to be consumed while that movie is being played and of course they're going to fight it we talked about that too there was a gofundme that was actually opened up and i know that the first thing that came across this particular article from the Salt Lake Tribune says Ryan Reynolds donates $5,000 to Bruvy's Deadpool defense. Mm. Well, 
The only thing that I would want to clarify is there's also an article over at Cinema Blend that says it has not been validated if that's actually Ryan or not. Right. But they're hoping that it is because whoever did it did it as Ryan Reynolds. Mm. So as of the posting of this original uh, Salt Lake Tribune article on April the 24th, the GoFundMe was up to $12,000. Mm. But now he did do a tweet. The tweet said, thank God they found a way to legislate fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what they're good at. <laughs> yep. It's very true. Uh, let's see. Tell you what, you, you, <laughs> Georgia knows how to execute people. <laughs> we're we're going to carry out our fifth execution thi- of this year. That's five so far, and this is April. Yeah, we're coming up Man. on the, we're coming up <laughs> on the end of April, but this is the fifth one. What are you trying to take the belt from Texas or something? I, g- <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Um, of course, now it's very it's very much deserved, especially this uh-huh. particular situation. So what they're doing is uh, Daniel Anthony Lucas is scheduled to be executed at 7 p.m. Wednesday at the state prison in Jackson. He was sentenced to die in 1999 for the killings of Stephen Moss, 37, his 11-year-old son Brian, and 15-year-old daughter Kristen, who interrupted a burglary at their home near Macon in central Georgia. Now, I vaguely remember this, and... Matter of fact, I think there might have might have been a Criminal Minds episode or something around this. You just you just never know. It's, it does seem familiar. So you had Lucas and another man, Brandon Road, were searching the Moss home for valuables in April of 1998 when Brian Moss saw them through a front window. He went in through the back door. He was armed with a baseball bat. They wrestled Brian to a chair, and Lucas shot him in the shoulder. And then he led the boy to a bedroom and shot him multiple times. Rode met Kristen, that's the 15-year-old girl, as she got home from school, forced her to sit on a chair and shot her twice with, with a pistol. Then they ambushed Stephen, the father, when he arrived home, shooting him four times with the same pistol. Then it says Lucas later shot the two children again to make sure they were dead. The wife discovered the bodies when she got home from work. Now, Rode, his co-defendant, was already put to death in September of 2010. Why did it have to take so long uh-huh. to, to end this man's life? Yeah. So the article goes on to say that if Lucas is executed Wednesday, it's going to be the fifth person to put to death in Georgia, and that will match the record set in 1987 and tied last year for the most executions carried out in a calendar year in the state since the death penalty was reinstated nationwide in 1976. And with eight months left in this year, we may set a new record. Um, It also means that Georgia has executed more inmates in a 12-month period than any other time since reinstatement of the death penalty. The only other time the state executed that many people in a 12-month period was when seven inmates were put to death between October of 2001 and August of 2002. Only four states have carried out executions this year for a total of 12. Aside from the four executed in Georgia, so far, six inmates have been put to death in Texas and one each in Alabama and Florida. All I can say is good riddance. Mm. What do you feel about, what's your feeling about the death penalty? Are you for or against? I think the... Put you on the spot. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Um, I'm not against it. Let's put it that way. Um, Punishment fitting the crime and everything like that. I'm, I'm not going to be the person that suddenly rants to its defense should things start to happen or stuff like that. But, um... I want public hangings. <laughs> public <laughs> hangings will bring back the guillotine. 
Yeah, you'll go you'll go one step less than Adam Curry that wants to make it a reality show, right? <laughs> I, hey, I'm you know what? I, I'm thinking that's great. Actually, that would be the best reality show on television right now. Everything else is crap. There was there was a joke in a Grand Theft Auto game. I think it was in three. That the yeah, it was three because it was one of the ones in Liberty City. Um, but it was called. And now the reality, I'll try to recall all of it all. I know I'm not going to do it quote for quote, right? The reality show that has this entire city reeling, Liberty City Survivors. We take former, we take inmates and release them on the streets in an all-out death match with only one survivor. (laughs) It's like, it's ridiculous, right? And they had quotes from people that had witnessed it live. Man, I got a wound in my leg, but it was quite a show to watch. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know, it's, it's hilarious. Oh, God. Kind of reminds yeah. me of, of The Running Man, mm. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Have you ever seen that? No, but I know of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very similar to it. I mean, it basically was a reality show where mm. if you were convicted— the, you you supposedly had a chance a chance of getting out, but nobody ever got out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Until then, <laughs> it's a, it's almost like we're suggesting the Hunger Games, but for inmates. Yeah, I'm I'm not. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I really don't. There there is a there is a part of me that goes, but we there's uh you know that sort of thing, <laughs> but. Yeah. The only that's... time that it ever becomes an issue in my mind is when someone is wrongfully accused and, mm-hmm. and wrongfully put in prison. Oh, yeah. And if we have, unfortunately, if we have what we consider swift justice, mm. then we run the risk of actually killing an innocent person. Totally. But at the same time... Y- What's the old saying? You got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. But mm-hmm. I mean, I, yep. yeah, I don't know. Um, it it is, it is kind of sad that those are th- that type of situation. But I mean, these guys, nineteen ninety nine, they did the crime in ninety eight. They were imprisoned in ninety nine. Mm-hmm. All right, the first one goes down in twenty ten, so that's roughly eleven years. Here we are about to finally kill the other one in 2016. Yeah. Makes no sense. Well, that means that not my money, because it's in your state, but your money right, went, right. went towards keeping this man alive for so long. I have been paying for the, the welfare and health and everything else of this asshole for the last 17 years. I mean, that, that mug shot, that is... That is cre- I'm closing this tab. That is a creepy mug shot. It ever- is. The what the ones that you know are a bit more insane than the other ones are the ones that take a picture like I'm standing there taking a picture, mm-hmm. right? They're like I killed all these people. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. No. And I do it again. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> mm. Well, like I said, good riddance. Mm. I want public hangings. <laughs> Televised. <laughs> Pay-per-view. 1995. <laughs> We're going to get rid of the Notorious 7. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so PAX East was going on uh, over the weekend. And apparently, they had... Uber had Overwatch vehicles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they said it had uh, Overwatch Uber cars that provided a stylish way to get around the PAX East convention. Uh, one of them, a Ford F650 Super Truck bearing the Overwatch Soldier 76 branding, hit the side of a car outside of the convention center late Friday evening. And what was not that not not that this is a laughable thing, but what was right. curious about it was the fact that the um Gearbox software CEO president and co-founder Randy Pitchford, who 
was there to talk about their game, Battleborn, which is kind of a direct competitor to Overwatch, yeah. actually witnessed it and said, just left PAX East and out full house main theater show to see a monster truck branded with competitive game run over a civilian car. You cannot make this up. They just smashed into the side of the civilian car. What a nightmare for everyone. Now, granted, Kudos, kudos to him that he did not mention the actual brand on the truck, by the way. Did no, you notice that's, that? that's good. That's good. I'm surprised. He just says competitor. Right. That is a huge truck. A 650 super truck? Mm. Huh. Anyway, so nobody was hurt. And uh, this is on GameSpot. They've reached out to Blizzard for comment. And uh says, otherwise, the Uber Watch promotion has gone on without any incident. <laughs> so I guess that's what they're calling it, Uber Watch. I, I, w- I would say that they didn't blink fast enough, but this is Soldier 76, so that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I got for that. <laughs> uh, you try it. I'll, I'll give you E for effort. <laughs> Have you watched those three uh, videos that I, I linked about? Uh, it's GameSpot's video series about... I haven't yet. Yeah. I'm going to, though. Yeah, once I found they had a page that actually had them all three just stacked on one another, that was the best. I watched the other two this morning. It's it's very, in, very informative. Mm. Of course, now they've got open beta, May 5th through the 9th. Mm-hmm. But I've pre-ordered, so I get it May 3rd. <laughs> shut up <laughs> just shut up <laughs> i told my wife i said honey i understand that our 26th wedding anniversary is may 4th <laughs> but you've got to understand overwatch pre-orders are available on may 3rd okay please pretty and then she, <laughs> and then she took a sip of her coffee said some words we won't repeat and you decided okay i've changed my mind <laughs> yeah, i decided that i'll play on may 3rd and then May 6th, <laughs> uh, or May 5th, not May 4th. Well, I'll be, I'll be able to play with you then because it's open beta, right? That's so, right, yeah. So I'll finally get to jump on this bandwagon. We'll have to do that that weekend. Yeah, definitely, because that's, uh, that's not this coming weekend, but it's the weekend after. So mm-hmm. that'll be, that's got to be the reason why they did it, because the 5th is a Thursday. Yeah, that fr- and Friday, Friday's the sixth, Saturday's the seventh. So I think it goes through the ninth, which would put it through Monday. Mm. Huh? It's not a bad, bad deal. Okay, and the oh, I forgot to let's see. That's not the last one. You added one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll bring it up. And we'll get to it. Court smacks down Kansas Christians for labeling evolution a religion to force school ban. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually kind of interesting how they tried to do this. I mean, I, I have to give them E for effort. Yeah. But a federal court has rejected an argument from a Christian group in Kansas, which said that evolution was a religious indoctrination and should be not should not be taught in schools. Mm. So, after the state of Kansas adopted Next Generation Science Standards, or NGSS, in 2013, Citizens for Objective Public Education, also known as COPE, argued that teaching science without a religious explanation for the creation of the universe would indoctrinate children into atheism. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) If we teach them science, they're going to be atheists. They said that teaching evolution took children, quote, into the religious sphere by leading them to ask ultimate religious questions like, what is the cause and nature of life and the universe? Where do we come from? Quote, the purpose of the indoctrination is to establish the religious worldview, not to deliver an age-appropriate audience an objective and religiously neutral origin science education that seeks to inform the group insisted. However. The Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals in Denver last week upheld a lower court's ruling which said that Cope lacked standing to bring the suit because it could not show that it it had been harmed. 
quote, Cope does not offer any facts to support the conclusion that the standards condemn any religion or send a message of endorsement, and any fear of biased instruction is premised on Cope's prediction of school districts' responses to the standards, an attempt by Cope to recast a future injury as a present one. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm going to say something. Go for it. <laughs> I've already I've already said this to you, but I feel like I need to say this publicly, so to speak. Um there is this weird little thing and I won't go too deep into this, but I'll just go as surface as I can and then we'll move on. There's this weird little thing where everyone assumes that science and a belief in a creator, I'm not going to say religion because that gets into a whole other thing, um, somehow buck against each other. Um, and it's something I have had to deal with my entire life because I am on both ends of that spectrum. I'm of a spiritual persuasion and I love my science. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've constantly had to deal with people going, well, how could you like that? Or how could you like that? You know, I've, I've dealt with people on both ends of this spectrum questioning me on this. Um, I don't, I don't quite see how the two can smack each other around as much as they do, especially, uh, although mind you, most of the time, the smacking around is done by the smart Alex of both ends of the camps. Okay. True. So it's it's not like you you have a spiritual leaning, you're going to go smacking around science, or you're a scientist, you're going to go smacking around spirituality. No, it, it's 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 more rare than you'd actually think. But you've got a bunch of loud mouths, so it seems more common. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for me, it's always been that the the analogy of the, the idea I've always used is this. Um, it's like seeing a magician do a magic trick and then having it explained to me how they did it. Mm -hmm. So the spiritual aspect of me is the magician doing the magic trick. The science thing is me getting a roadmap as to how it happened. It Suddenly having an explanation does not suddenly mean that, oh, that means they didn't do it. It's like, no, that's probably how they did it <laughs> sort of thing. So this whole science versus spirituality thing that constantly shows up, I just, I just roll my eyes every single time it comes out, regardless of which side says it. Because both sides have jerks. That's, <laughs> that's the way I'm going to put it. <laughs> but d both sides have their people. Uh, Christianity has Westboro, right? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> science has, has Richard Dawkins. So we both <laughs> have people in the groups that go way too dang far with saying, this is how I think things. And you're stupid for believing that because both si both of those examples do just that, right? But can't we just freaking get along? That's that's what I want. I want people just to get along. I may be naive and think it's never going to happen or, or thinking it's happened and it's actually never going to happen, but I can at least hope, right? <laughs> oh, you young Padawan. <laughs> You're an old bitter man at this point, just watching the kid go, oh. Yep. I remember when I was that young, dumb, and never mind. Anyway, um, uh, I don't I don't necessarily disagree with you. Um, all in all, I suppose. I mean, I here's the way I feel about it, though. Mm. A public education. You go to a school that is that is funded by public dollars. My dollars. Oh, yeah. I'm a spoiler alert. I'm about to agree with you on this one. By the way, I was talking about a bigger topic. <laughs> right, right, right. I don't believe that any publicly funded school system should ever be teaching anything religious in nature. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say that they maybe can't have like special little after school groups or something like that. I mean, I'm I'm willing yeah. to go that far, but it should not, cannot be part of the regular curriculum where suddenly, you know, we've got a 
religious religion 101 that I've got to take for eight weeks or what yeah. have you. You know, if you want to do that, if that's the way you want to raise your children, send them to a private school, send them to a religious school, you know, something like that. You have options, but don't try to force that belief system on the rest of the people that are in this public school. You may find that you've got kindred spirits in that school that that agree with you, Mm -hmm. but it's like I've argued before. Laws are written for everyone, which means they have to be neutral. They cannot mm-hmm. be, they, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but they cannot be tainted by religion. Right. Um, and so, and I saw what they did here is they were, they were basically trying to say, well, evolution is religious in nature, so therefore it can't be taught either. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, see what you did there. That that was that was pretty good. That's clever. Yeah, it's very it clever. It's a nice angle. <laughs> yeah, you lost anyway, but oh, so uh, Ars Technica pointed out that the Tenth Circuit included a footnote in its ruling stating that it would have found Cope's remedy that creationism to be taught alongside evolution to be unconstitutional based on a 1987 Supreme Court ruling in the Edwards versus. Oligard case. So apparently they were also, they, they were basically saying, well, if evolution is religious, you either got to ban it or you got to let us teach creationism along with it. Mm. So there we have that. Yeah. All right. This one you added. Mm-hmm. I have not read it. Didn't have time. <laughs> Good. That means I get to paint you a picture. Okay. So imagine you're in Portugal. You're, you're backpacking in Portugal, suppose, I guess. I don't know why you'd be backpacking given you're about to be near a landfill, but let's just say <laughs> that you're rolling through, right? Okay. So normally, birds have cycles. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll go south for the winter. They'll do stuff like that. Apparently, storks in Portugal, or at least a specific area of Portugal, are starting to not do this. They're starting to not migrate for one very specific reason. Most of the time, birds will, there are different reasons, but a lot of the times it's for food sources because whenever it's winter, they can't get the appropriate food that they need. Mm -hmm. So apparently landfills in Portugal are starting to fix this problem to where, and you're showing the pictures right now, these storks, are staying around because they have realized that all of the junk inside of the landfill is fulfilling that duty for them. (laughs) And apparently it's not just them eating uh, things. Uh, Some of their, I'm going to read from the thing here. Some of their favorite menu items the researchers found were rotten fish, leftover chicken and hamburgers. They also observed the birds munching on rubbish like computer parts and bits of paper. (laughs) In one case, they found a stork with an old, dirty, a pair of old, dirty jeans wrapped around its beak. (laughs) Oh, wow. So, so apparently, uh, apparently these storks are just going, hey, bro, bro, there's, there's food here. Why are we going to go go down south, man? Well, it's because it's always been tradition. Man. No, man, 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 man. Screw tradition. I'm tired of tradition. Look at our bro over there with the with the jeans on his beak. He knows what's up. We are going <laughs> to stay here. Bro, look at me. Look at me, bro. And we're going to eat here. But some of this stuff is unhealthy. Just eat some more computer parts and you'll be fine. <laughs> just just eat some more computer parts. You feel better now? Well, I feel better now, but I'm going to be in a coma for the rest of the day. That's fine. That's fine. Do that. Do that, man. That's good. <laughs> you know, it's, it's... God, I think you were just channeling your inner John Oliver. A bit, actually. <laughs> I, did, I did channel a bit of John Oliver without meeting uh, But But no, that's that's what these birds are doing. And, and I... I think if I'm not mistaken, um, she said she was curious to see what the storks will do in the winter without their drunk truck buffet. Um, 
Perhaps, she said, they'll revert to the original migratory routes or find another way to satisfy their garbage cravings. Because this thing isn't going to be unlimited, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they're going to pick their way through this. Um, But apparently in Portugal, they're going to start outlawing landfills, the, the open variety, and start switching to composting factories, which means that all of these storks that have now gotten used to this landfill buffet. Oh, boy. It won't be there for very long. Apparently, it's going to happen in 2018. So they've got about, yeah, two years to enjoy their buffet, and then it'll be gone, which then makes you sit there and think. Are they going to be able to remember how to migrate? I know. That's going to be the curious and kind of sad bit of this whole thing is, are we going to have a species that is suddenly going to become... Almost extinct. Imp- yeah, <laughs> impotent. Yeah. Simply because they can't. <laughs> impotent in various different ways because they can't. Man, my bros in the past, they, they feed it on this. And now these humans have taken it away. What do we do? Well, there was a thing called flight. No, that's too much, man. That's way too much. For- <laughs> do you remember back in ancient times? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, nah, that's just a myth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Flight, these are... These are just things to where we could cool each other off. These aren't meant for flight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I you know I could see the benefits to the landfill of these birds actually cleaning up the landfill a little bit with what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I don't know how much of that actually comes to pass. I mean, you know, they still got the crap everywhere and all of that too. So I guess you know, garbage in, garbage out. Right. Um. But it is interesting. I mean, so they're going to go to closed composting factories. Yeah. 2018 will be the year that the storks die out <laughs> in Portugal. <laughs> Portugal. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's, it's mm. interesting. It really is. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's a cute story. Interesting, cute, and sad. All, and all three at the same time. Right? Very true. Very true. Very true. All right, well, that's all we've got on the docket today. I think that's going to wrap it up, unless you got anything else you want to bring up. Nope, I'm good. All right. Well, where can where can people find you on the interwebs when you're not doing this show with me? Well, they can find all of my podcasting efforts and Let's Plays at tscn.tv. And if you want to find me more personally on all my social media feeds, you can go to about.me slash labtech7. Sounds good. And everything I'm doing is over at slant.fm, and all my social media stuff is at about.me slash gdadkissin. Like I said, this is a call-in show. We are now doing it Monday and Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So give us a call during the show, 229-518-3525. The show usually runs between about 2 and 3 o'clock. If you call after 3, you're, well, we're we're not going to be here to talk to you. So anyway. (laughs) We'll be back Wednesday, hopefully, uh, 2 p.m. If something changes, we'll tweet it out and let you know what's going on. But uh, until then, everybody have a great, uh, great rest of the afternoon, a great Tuesday, and we'll see you Wednesday. Until then, take care. Bye bye. show is a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.